Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Nathan Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to. And this one says, this demon revealed the Quran to Muhammad finally exposed. Okay, whoa. This person must be getting it so hard on, <laughs> on Muslim, you know, by saying such a word. But well, anyway, when we get down to the video, we could hear some of the reasons that make him to utter such a remark even though well anyway <laughs> it's gonna be a very interesting video then so if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my facebook and instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys before we get on to the video i'm a theologian and i make this video not to discredit anyone's religion this is basically for educational purposes and i believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from it so let's get on to the video and check out some of the things he is saying by uttering that word that the demon revealed the quran to prophet muhammad hi in this video i will prove muhammad spoke for satan not for god the quran says in chapter 81 verse 25 Wa ma huwa which means and it, meaning the Qur'an, is not the word of the outcast Satan. Now, why does the author of the Qur'an seem so defensive here? Why was it necessary to make such a statement? Was Muhammad accused of being inspired by Satan? Well, this is where I introduce you to this demon, whom you see depicted here. If you read the Islamic commentaries on the Qur'an, in particular for chapter 81 verse 25, chapter 59 verse 16, and chapter 22 verse 52, you will see this is the demon who tricked Muhammad into thinking he was receiving divine revelation from God, while in reality he was under the control of Satan. This demon is known as Al-Abiyad, or the White One. The famous Islamic commentary on the Qur'an, Tafsir Al-Qurtubi, says regarding chapter 22 verse 52, quote, قال ابن عباس إن شيطانا يقال له الأبيض كان قد أتى رسول الله في صورة جبريل عليه السلام وألقى في قراءة النبي تلك الغرانيق العلا وإن شفاعتهن لترتجى which means Ibn Abbas said a Satan named Al-Abiyad, or the White One, came to the Messenger of Allah, meaning Muhammad, in the form of Gabriel and cast into his recitation, meaning his Quran recitation, quote, Indeed, they are the high gharaniq, and indeed their intercession is to be hoped for. For those of you who don't know, the gharaniq were false gods that the pagans of Arabia worshipped. So, we see here that Muhammad was deceived into reciting the words of Satan. Because this demon known as al abiyad would appear to him in the form of the angel Gabriel, thus proving Muhammad was not able to distinguish between demonic revelations from Satan and divine revelations from God. And notice, this narration was provided by Ibn Abbas, one of Muhammad's closest companions proving that the narration of this incident was in circulation amongst the earliest Muslims. And if you investigate about this particular jinn or demon, you will find he's often associated with a certain day of the week. Various sources identify Al-Abiyad with Monday. Sometimes he is identified as the Lord of Monday and also as one of the seven kings of the jinn demons associated with Monday. Now, why do you think this identification is so important? Well, what day of the week do you think Muhammad received the first revelation of the Qur'an? For the answer, I turn you to this award-winning biography of Muhammad called The Sealed Nectar, which informs us on page 68 that it was on a Monday. I think you now get the point. Dear Muslims, in this short video, I've proven that your prophet Muhammad mistook Satan's words for God's words. Therefore, I have proven that Muhammad was under the control of Satan. And because in this incident, Muhammad's Quran revelation was successfully infiltrated by Satan, you, therefore, the Muslims, cannot trust Muhammad's Quran revelation at all other times. So here's what you Muslims need to do. 
Instead of following a false prophet who cannot distinguish between Gabriel and satanic imitation of Gabriel, a false prophet who cannot be trusted to convey the words of God because he judged and accepted the words of Satan as the words of God, you must now leave Muhammad and follow the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth, and the Bible teaches us that he had complete control over Satan. Go and read Mark chapter 5, which shows Jesus had full power over a man who was possessed with literally thousands of demons. I pray this video helps open your eyes and you accept and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching, and God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a very interesting um, video. Well, I don't really know what to even say because that's not what I was expecting. But then that's what he is saying, of course, um, quoting a particular verse to back up his own um, point. I don't know how true is that because, um, well, I have not studied that very um, passage in the Quran. So I can't be able to like interpret it to whether um, the Quran, you understand, was wrongly revealed to um, prophet Muhammad by a demon because as for me I just believe that um, the Quran is actually the God word and it was revealed to him through um, angel um, Gabriel well this word we are not given for his own benefit but therefore for humanity's sake but if he were to be for his own um, benefit then what would he now gain then he could have used it for his own benefit and that's why you look at the prophet life while he was here on this very earth right he never lived as a king he never lived like somebody that needed wealth here but everything he was doing is actually for the kingdom of god in the sense that it was all about you understand at eternity what is going to happen what will happen to your soul so those are the things he was much more concerned about and not necessarily about things that he is going to benefit him here on this very earth for if it were to be so and that's what the prophet want for himself then he could have lived this kind of a lavish life this kind of loyalty that everything is just there or at his own disposal and all that but then the prophet never lived like that if you read in a sense from the quran and some of the hadith of the prophet and then some of the narration of the companion they never mention something of that um nature of course everyone has his own opinion to say whatever they feel in a stand was what that actually um, happened and of course uh, maybe probably for some of the Muslim brothers you can kind of tend to educate me concerning some of the verses you was tend to point out in the Quran to know you understand some of these things because I'm not much more familiar about it but it does the little I know about Islam is what I have said and then to some of the videos I've reacted the hadith of the prophet and the, some of the things he saw and then he predicted and then some of those things in a stand came to pass and then some of the revelation it can't just be from him you know it can't just be from him but well anyway <laughs> i can't in a sense say much but god knows um better so your thoughts and opinion are all welcome at the comment section of course somebody can, could help to interpret what that very verse means you understand in the arabic and then also the english translation if you understand that's what um, the quran actually um meant so this is the end of my video if you like my reaction you should like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed and i see you in my next video bye bye